Okay, so let's go through exponent rules really, really, really quickly. Okay, so if I have a to the n times a to the m, so let's give it a number. Um, how about 2? I have 2 times 2 equals 2. So if I have 4 2s and 3 2s, then I have a total of 7 2s, right? Which makes sense. If I wrote them out, I could count them up. This one's a little bit different. If I have, let's change our number to 3. If I have a 3, I'm trying to utilize my color changes. If I have a 3 to the 4 power, and I take that to a power 3 times, that's saying 3 times 3 times 3, right? But each one of them is 3 to the 4th. It says I have a 3 to the 4th, and another 3 to the 4th, and another 3 to the 4th, which makes 3 to the 12th. 3 to the 12th. Which some of you know the shortcut, you're just multiplying, I have 4, 3 times. So you don't really have to write it out. But conceptually, that's what it means. Then I've got this one. This one's pretty easy. I don't want to change all of this. I don't want to go this way. So, I'm going to take a picture of it. Because I'm being lazy. Take a picture of it. It's a lot to write, right? How do you like that? <laughs> okay. So, let's pick two numbers. Matthew, pick two numbers. So, we have <laughs> oh, great. So, if I have a radical over a radical, as long as they have the same index, that's what we call that, the index, right? This is the index right here. That's the index. Okay? So, I like to call it the out of. I'll put this on a separate, because I was just going to put it on the board, but I'll put it over here. So if you can see it. So if I have x, and this is a 2, and this is a 3, I have I have 3 over 2, but I wanted to write it a special way. I have x to the 3 out of 2. Does that make sense? I don't know if Miss Liz wrote it like that or said it like that, but that's the way I speak it because that's the way I remember it. I have 3 of them out of 2. If I only had, so I can basically simplify this because Right? I can take an x squared out because it matches the index. I have 3 out of 2. If I only had 1 out of 2, I wouldn't be able to simplify it anymore. I need at least 2 out of 2. Make sense? Okay, let's go back. All right, so we're good with this. So if I have a fraction that has a radical in the numerator and a radical in the denominator, as long as they have the same index, I can change it to... They're both underneath the radical. Yes, sir. You can never count, unless they're simplifiable underneath here. That's sometimes why we use that rule. If I could, let's say this was a 4. Let's say this, instead of being a 3, was a 4. That would be a good reason to put them over each other, because I can simplify this. To one half. That would be a reason to do it. No. No. Yes, right. What happens? It's right here. You can come back in. 
Okay. Let's move on. All right. So three different ways I can write this. So I've got, let's see. I'm trying to do the fastest way to do this. Okay. So let's pick, pick an index. What do you want? What do we want to use for index? I heard four. So I've got four, and then I've got four, and then I've got a fraction, and which one's going to be the four, the numerator or the denominator? Because it's out of, out of four. Make sense? Pick a number for A. Here it. Eight, eight, eight. Pick a number for M. I like two. I like two. So this one states that the parentheses, I can put the exponent on the outside of the parentheses because it's saying I have a fourth root of eight three times. That's what that's saying. I have a fourth root of eight three times, which is the same thing as saying I have a fourth root of eight three times. I have three of them. Doesn't that mean the same thing? I have three eighths that are under a square root of four. I have three eighths that are under a square root of four. It means the exact same thing. Aaron. That's, I, that's, that's common, right? I have three out of four. No. Nope. Right. Yeah, whatever is inside the square root is attached to the 8. I'm talking about 3 8. Just like over here, I'm talking about 3 8. Yes? These two are the same. All three of these are equivalent. Essence. You can't just switch 3 and 4. That's like saying, yeah, it's changing the entire problem. Yeah, that's just like saying, I'm a, I have a pizza that's cut in fours, and I have a pizza that's cut in threes, and I'm just going to switch them. Like, you already cut one pizza in fours, and you already cut one pizza in three, so if you switch them, you're going to have some pieces that are bigger than others. Does that make sense? That's Those are easy to talk about with fractions. Okay. But if you're on a phone, you need to stop being on a phone. Okay. You're just looking down. I just want to make sure. Okay. So let's go back over our vocabulary. So this is always our index, right? Our index matches here as well. This is our exponent. You know that. This is our exponent here. And this is our, this is a radical sign, so whatever underneath it is a radicand. Okay? You guys like the radicand? Okay. And I think Ms. Liz went over this last time. This is probably what you guys did yesterday. True? All right. So let's give an example to it. Give an example to this one. It's just distribution. Yeah. Okay. So pick a number for A. Two. 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 And pick a number for B. I heard three. Thank you. Three. So times three, times three, 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 and then pick a number for n. I like ten. So this means I have ten twos and ten threes because ten is distributed. To, it says I have a quantity 
that's being multiplied by itself 10 times. So I could write 2 times 3 10 times, or I could write 2 10 times and 3 10 times. Okay? One second, let me finish this up. If I have a quantity of 2 thirds 10 times, then I have a 2 10 times divided by a 3 10 times. Okay. Yes. Yes. We just don't write it like that because when you have variables, you can't multiply the variables. Make sense? But it is the same thing. You would get the same answer. Oh, yeah. Variables per day. Aaron. No. You've got to be able to show your work. Yes. Okay, can we all? Can we all stop complaining, please? Thank you. Yes, exactly. Well, why don't I get to it, and then you guys can see. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of what I was trying to explain earlier, right? If I have something to an N index, then I know I have, I mean, these are different. If I know I have something to an N index, then I know I have X, to the whatever I have here, the exponent here. I don't want to use a zero though. No, use an A. I have an X to the A out of N. Oh, it is the same. It just looks like it was a fraction, but it's not. We'll make this an A. There we go, better? I have an x to the a over n. Okay, so let's practice. Ooh, one more thing we got to go over. Okay, this is my proof for our negative exponent. Okay, so everybody agrees that my 10, starting here, 10 to the third, 10 to the second, 10 to the first, 10 to the zero. Naturally, the next numbers that are going to come are negative numbers, right? To the negative one, negative two, negative three. If I, I'm, let me explain. Thank you. <laughs> if I'm getting bigger by, have a good day. <laughs> if I'm getting bigger by 10, right, I'm multiplying by 10, multiplying by 10, multiplying by 10, then to go the other direction, I'm dividing by 10, dividing by 10, dividing by 10. write it like this, though. Instead of writing it like this, <laughs> no, I'm going to write with exponents because that's what we're using. So this would be 1 over 10 to the 1, right? This would be 1 over 10 to the 2. This would be 1 over 10 to the 3, which makes sense about negative exponents. Negative exponents are positive fractions. No, it has nothing to do with i. 10 to the negative 3, guys, is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the 3. They're the same thing. You can write them either way. We normally don't write with negative exponents. So whenever you see negative exponents, you go, oh, that's something getting smaller. Smaller things are fractions, right? So I would write it as a fraction, 1 over 10 cubed. Okay, what if I had... What if I had 1 over 10 to the negative 2? Nope. Nope. That's why you don't use calculators, because you're putting it in wrong. Nope. What I tell you, negative exponents are positive fractions. So negative fractions are the opposite, are positive, not fractions. So this, if I want it to be in the numerator, the 10 to the negative 2 becomes 
a positive two, right? I didn't hear you because everybody was complaining. And then, so 10 squared is 100. Exactly. So if I have, I could have a to the fourth, b to the third over c to the negative two, d times m to the negative five. Here we go. All right? This is exactly what we're doing today. Are we ready? A to the, we never leave things as, ne we never leave things as negative exponents. So, a to the fourth stays there. B to the cube stays there. M to the negative five goes down to the denominator. I do the in, listen up, I do the inverse of the numerator. If I want the inverse, it's all multiplication, right? So if I want the inverse of a negative, that I want to make it positive, then I take the inverse of the numerator and I put it in the denominator. They're all inverses. So the C goes to the numerator and it's now positive squared and the D stays there. Pretty easy? Okay, wait. Nick, what was your question? Nate, I don't know why I called you Nick. Nick's right behind you. Say it again. But it's not, it's not, it's... It's a hundred to the negative one. It's still a negative exponent. It's up. Yes, Ethan. Chris, you better not be on the phone. Put your backpack on the ground. Stay well. Sorry, Ethan. Numbers getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't know. Okay. Let's hope. This is for King. Can you pass the ballot back to him? Okay, I also need to take a little, how close do you guys, you guys are asking awesome questions, but we really need to get to this, you practicing, because that's what's going to make you successful. So, I'm just going to, I'm going to go through a few examples. Okay, so. So these, right, are the same thing. I can either write it as 10 to the negative 1, or I can write it, put the 10 in the, new, in the denominator and make it a positive 1. And I can do the reverse as well. If there's a in the denominator, I can put it in the numerator and it'll be positive. So I can do opposite, opposite. This? No. Denominator. It's 1 over 10 to the 1 is just 1 over 10. Got it? Okay, I know it's very abstract. So, if I have a negative exponent, it can go into the denominator and become positive, and vice versa, if I have a negative exponent denominator, it can go into the numerator and become positive. Okay? It's the same thing I just, we've just been going over, guys. It's no different, it just has letters. Let me use let me use some um, numbers to go along with it. What do you want to make A? Nine. Okay. And what do you want to make N? I'm going to say 3 and 5. 
Okay. So if I were to write this out, I need you guys to have stop talking, please. If I were, stop talking means to stop moving your lips. Right? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. So, I don't care. It's me. It's real. Right? So, 9 cubed is 9 times 9 times 9. Right? And 9 to the 5th is 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 times 9. Times nine. So, how many 9s am I crossing off? Three. So I'm crossing off three, crossing off three. So this is where this rule comes. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish my thought. So I have one over nine squared, right? Or what I could have done. I need you guys to stop talking over me. It's really irritating me. What I could have done here instead is I could have used this rule over here, right here. I could have used it, these two rules. I could have said, okay, I know I had such pretty colors going, and now I don't, and it's irritating me. Okay, so I could have said to myself, well, I know that if I put, I've got 9 in the denominator, and I've got a 9 to the 3 in the numerator, couldn't I put the 9 to the 3 in the denominator, and it becomes a negative 3, right? And then what do I have in the numerator? I have nothing, right? So I just have a 1. And so now I can use exponent rules, right, and say to myself, I have 9 to the 5 minus 3 is 9 to the 2. So I got the same thing. Where's this one in that, right? Do I not write it out and cross things off? Totally up to you. Yes. Yep. If this was a negative exponent, if this was a negative 3, you guys, that was a weird question. If this was a negative 3, then this would have been a negative 8. Uh, this would have been a positive 8. Because I would have made it positive when I came down, and I have 5 and 3 of them, and it makes 8. Okay, I really need you guys to work. I think, hold on, let me see what slides I have here. I know, huh? No, I just thought I'd show it to you just for the heck of it. Of course it's going to be on the homework. Okay, let me show you a couple, and then I'm going to have you guys go getting on your homework. All right, so I have 5 to the 4th and 10 to the 4th. They both have a 4th in common. They don't cancel out. They don't cancel out. I can say I've got 5 to the 10th, all of that to the 4th, right? I can do the, why not? If I had this, wouldn't that mean 5 to the 4th, 10 to the 4th? So couldn't I do the reverse? I haven't finished yet. This times negative one fourth. Let's see here. Okay, wait for it. I'm not done. I'm stuck my notes to teacher. Four times negative one fourth. Now five to the tenth can simplify, right? It's inside the parentheses, so it can simplify, so I have one half. And four times, this is really a 4 over 1, right? Don't the 4s cancel out? And I have a negative 1. Doesn't that mean I can distribute that to everything on the inside? So isn't that 1 to the negative 1 over 2 to the negative 1? So don't they both have to switch places? So it's just 2. So that big old mess up there was just 2. Or I can say I have this to the negative 1, which means both of them switch places. And you could just go from there. Chris? Yes. Right here. Right here. So the negative 1 means that everybody in here is going to switch places, so I just switch them. 
which is 2 over 1, which is 2. Five root two, five root two is twenty-five. Yeah, I, I suppose you could, because two times you could, it would be two times five to the fourth. You're right. You can do that. So it's to the fourth times five to the fourth, and the five to the fourth would cancel, and you would get. You could do that. Yep. There's lots of different methods. As long as you follow the rules of algebra, you're good. Okay? Because some people would have done this differently. Like, you would have, you saw it differently, right? Okay, let's try another one. Yeah. I'm factoring them out of the parentheses. Okay, so this is going to frustrate some of you because lots of you like, just tell me how to do it. Let me show you. Change just showed us a different way. I could have distributed the negative one-fourth to everybody in here. That would have been five to the fourth times negative one-fourth, right? Over ten to the fourth times negative one-fourth, which equals four times negative one over four is five to the negative one. And this is going to be 10 to the negative 1. They both switch places, which is 10 over 5, which is 2. Right, there's multiple ways to do it. Whatever is easier for you, whatever you see. You're going to have a different strategy than me, but as long as you're using exponent rules, it's fine. Let's go to this one. I'm going to duplicate the page and then... Um, erase some of this. That way you guys still have this, okay? Let's do this next one. Alright. Alright, so this one, from being in other teachers' classrooms for two days, I had so much fun, you guys. I taught a conceptual lesson in 7th grade and in 8th grade. No, they were excellent for me. They're always, you're always better for somebody else, right? No, not subs, but if it's an educator that comes in as like a master teacher, you're going to be good for them. All right, so 2 to the negative 4. And the math coach. So this is 2 to the negative 4, which goes in the denominator. So you guys take me for granted. 2 to the negative 4 is going to become 2 to the 4. 32 to the 2 is going to stay on top. 16 to the 2 is going to stay on the bottom. And 4 to the negative 2 is going to come up top. Now, I can simplify all of these. All of these have the same base. They all have a base of 2, so wouldn't that make my life a lot easier? So I'm going to change all of the bases to 2. So this is 2 to the 5th, and I have two of them, so that's 2 to the 10th. Or I'll just say 2 to the 5th, 2 times. Did everybody see that? Right? This is 2 to the 5th right here, and I have it twice. This is 2 squared, and I have 2 of them. This is 2 to the 4th. 32 is 2 to the 6th. Find the bases. Yes, you'll see why. And this is what? The 4th. 2 to the 4th, and how many of those do I have? 2. So let me simplify that. So now I have 2 to the 10th times 2 to the 4th 
over 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 8th. So now I have 2. How many do I have? 10 and I have 4, so I have 14. And then I have 4 and 8, which is 12. Now, you be my guest. You can write 2 14 times. And you can write 2 12 times if you want. Or you can see that if I wrote out 12 and 14, I would have 2 left in the numerator. Does that not make sense? If you write out 14 of them, and you write out 12 of them, and you cancel 12 on the bottom, and you cancel 12 in the top, aren't you going to have 2 left over? For those of you that are visual, I'm going to write it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No. There's 12 of them. And 12 of them, which makes 2 left over. 12, 14 minus 12 is 2, guys. 2 to the 2 over 1, which is just 4. Right. going on the homework. I know, but I don't want you to confuse anybody else. Pick one on the back that you don't like and I'll do it right now. Okay? Number 10. You're very welcome. I don't care. Did I ask if I cared or not? No. I don't think I asked anything. I don't think I, I just put my hand out. Thank you. Because you need your headphones to check your grades, right? I usually use my headphones when I check school. So? I don't care. Okay. You guys are like the stepchildren back there, huh? Okay. Which one do you want me to do? Which one? On the back. You tell me. What's hard to me is probably not as much hard to you. Twelve. Okay. Twelve is... Okay. So, I've got 3 cubed to the 4th index times, what's the first thing I should do? x squared cubed over, what's the first thing I should do? Read the directions. Simplify the expression by writing it using rational exponents. It wants you using rational exponents, the fractions. Rational is fractions, right? Ratio, fractions. So it says I have to write them as rational exponents and then use the properties of rational exponents. Assume that all variables are positive. Exponents in simplified form should all be positive. What does that mean? What does exponents in simplified form should all be positive mean? Yeah, I can't have any, I, can, I need inverses because I can't have negative exponents. Okay? All right, so first, let me just switch everything to a rational exponent. Make sense? Okay. So I have three. My base is three. I have three of them out of four. Then I have x. I have two x's out of three. Then I have three x. I have one of them, right, one of them out of two. So I'm going to rewrite this now. 
3 to the 3 fourths times x to the 2 thirds over, I'm going to distribute. I've got 3 to the 1 half and x to the 1 half. Ooh, this one's going to be fun. You're going to see exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, you can't cancel. This is this is a different base, right? And this one is a different or different denominator. So just check this out. I'm going to use negative exponent. Okay, which one's bigger, two thirds or one half? Two thirds is bigger than one half. So I want to move this guy. This is a good one for me to do. This is a hard one. I have to move this one up here. But when I move it, it's going to become negative one half, right? So now I'm going to have x to the negative one half. That's not very pretty. Yeah. There you go. Does that make you feel better? We good? Yeah. Which one's bigger, three fourths or one half? So I want you want to move the smaller one, right? So I'm going to move this one up here. But when I move it up here, it's going to become 3 to the negative 1 half. Now, what do I have to do now? When I have x to the 2 times x to the 3, what do I do? You add them. Can I add these? Why? I need a common denominator. What a pain in the butt this problem is, right? Oh, hold on. I don't need everybody yelling at me. Please stop talking. Guys, you are interrupting the thought process of everybody else. So just keep it self-talk, and then I'll answer your questions afterwards. So I'm going to change this to 2 fourths. Do everybody agree with that? So I have 3 to the negative 2 fourths, and I have 3 to the 3 fourths, and then I have x. I need to change this denominator. What am I going to change this denominator to? 6. So to do that, I multiply both by 2 and 2. So now it's 4, 6. And this one is 3, 6. Because I multiply by 3 over 3, and I get negative 3, 6. I'm almost done, guys. So this is 3 fourths three minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth. And x, 4 thirds, uh, 4, 6 minus 3, 6 is one six and we're done.